In this video, I discuss some of the problems that may arise if large quantities of sulfur dioxide or other chemicals are injected into the upper atmosphere to stop or slow down global warming. Geoengineering, or alternatively climate engineering, is an umbrella term for both carbon dioxide removal and solar radiation modification when applied on a planetary scale. Examples of geoengineering include the construction of systems designed to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and to sequester it deep underground, changing the Earth's albedo or reflectivity by planting crops that are light in color over large areas, or painting roofs and roadways white to reflect more sunlight. Other examples of geoengineering include solar radiation modification by cloud whitening techniques and the injection of large quantities of material into the Earth's upper atmosphere to reflect some of the incoming sunlight. This last example of geoengineering has received a lot of attention recently because of its potential to quickly counteract global warming over the entire planet. The most frequently proposed material for this purpose is sulfur dioxide, primarily because it's well known that large quantities of sulfur dioxide ejected into the atmosphere from volcanic eruptions and the burning of coal have a cooling effect on the atmosphere. Other reflective substances such as titanium dioxide and diamond dust also have been proposed for solar radiation modification, but their effectiveness is less certain. This chart from the Japan Meteorological Agency shows how global average surface temperatures have changed since 1891. The blue line is the five-year running average of the data. As you can see from the chart, the average global surface temperature of the Earth has increased approximately 1.3 degrees centigrade, or about 2.3 degrees Fahrenheit, since 1891. But if you look closely at the chart, between about 1945 and 1975, there was almost no change in the global average surface temperature. The reason for this 30-year pause in global warming is quite informative. Starting around 1945, there was worldwide development of electric power. The primary fuel source for these new electric power plants was cheap, soft coal with a high sulfur content. As these new power plants came online, they emitted large quantities of sulfur dioxide into the lower atmosphere. This sulfur dioxide reacted with the water vapor in the atmosphere to produce sulfuric acid particulates, which reflected some of the incoming sunlight back into outer space. This in turn counteracted the global warming that was being caused by the carbon dioxide and methane emitted as fossil fuels were burned to power the Industrial Revolution. The sulfuric acid emitted by these coal-burning power plants was a major source of air pollution and acid rain. To combat this air pollution and acid rain, governments around the world began to require the electric power industry to install scrubbers on power plant smokestacks that would prevent the sulfur dioxide from entering the atmosphere. As a result, global average surface temperatures began to rise again starting around 1975. By then, this unintended climate experiment had shown that injecting sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere was an effective way to counteract global warming. Volcanic eruptions also eject considerable amount of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere, and in some cases, these eruptions can res result in widespread cooling of the atmosphere. Most volcanic eruptions eject sulfur dioxide only into the lower atmosphere, and the sulfuric acid particulates formed by the ejected sulfur dioxide washes out relatively close to the erupting volcano and has only a localized short-term effect on weather. However, occasionally, 
a very major volcanic eruption will take place that ejects significant amounts of sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere. When this happens, the upper atmospheric wind patterns can distribute this material worldwide and the effects on climate can last for a year or more. For example, the 1991 eruption of Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines ejected sufficient sulfur dioxide into the upper atmosphere to reduce global average surface temperature by about half a degree centigrade for about a year. Cooling effects from the cataclysmic eruption of Krakatoa in 1883 lasted for about three years, and an earlier major eruption of Mount Tambora in the Dutch East Indies in 1815 led to global cooling that lasted for approximately five years. In fact, 1816 was known as the year without a summer. Solar radiation modification supporters point to the results of these natural experiments to suggest that introducing sulfur dioxide particles into the stratosphere can be an effective way to stop or at least slow down the effects of global warming. Solar radiation modification by the injection of sulfur dioxide particles into the upper atmosphere very likely would slow the rate of global warming and there certainly would be benefits from that. These benefits would include a reduction in the frequency and intensity of extreme temperature and precipitation events, slowing sea level rise by slowing the melting of glaciers and the Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets. Slowing global warming also would slow down the weakening of the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation system with its consequential major climate impacts. Other benefits from slowing down global warming would include some reduction in the intensity of hurricanes and tropical cyclones. Additionally, slowing down global warming would slow declines in soil moisture and vegetation moisture, which would have positive impacts on agriculture and wildfires. There are also major risks associated with solar radiation modification by the injection of sulfur dioxide particulates into the upper atmosphere. Our understanding of many of those risks comes in large part from atmospheric modeling experiments. These models are far from perfect, so there is substantial uncertainty associated with their results. But to begin with, it's the sulfuric acid particulates that are formed from the sulfur dioxide by chemical reactions that reflect incoming sunlight. Because the chemistry of the upper atmosphere is not well understood, this leads to uncertainty in the amounts of sulfur dioxide that would be needed to be injected into the stratosphere to obtain the desired degree of cooling. The models also predict that injecting sulfur dioxide into the upper atmosphere would increase acid deposition on the Earth's surface in the higher latitudes, thereby contributing to negative effects in land areas as well as increasing ocean acidification. In addition, at least one modeling experiment suggests that injecting sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere would increase the size of the ozone hole in the southern hemisphere. Another risk that needs to be taken into consideration is the interaction between the solar radiation modification activities and a major volcanic eruption. While volcanic eruptions that are eject large amounts of particulates into the stratosphere are rare, if one were to occur while solar radiation modification sulfur dioxide injection was taking place, the consequence might be excessive global cooling for a long enough time to affect agricultural production negatively. In the absence of volcanic interruptions, interactions, the sudden termination of solar radiation modification for geopolitical or other reasons likely would be followed by very rapid global warming with negative effects on agriculture. The modeling also suggests that injecting sulfur dioxide into the upper atmosphere 
would it lead to increased salt deposition on land areas, also contributing to negative effects on agriculture? Finally, in addition to the climatological risks associated with the injection of sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere, there are very significant geopolitical risks. Solar radiation modification would, would affect the entire planet, but there are no international mechanisms in place to govern it. Any country or even private entities might decide that it was in their interest to engage in solar radiation modification without seeking worldwide approval, in which case every country on the planet will be subjected to the climatological risks of solar radiation modification. This could lead to dangerous international conflicts. In the opinion of many, including myself, the geopolitical risks associated with solar radiation modification weigh more heavily against it than the worst of the climatological risks. In closing, let me note that I think that injecting substances into the upper atmosphere to slow down global warming is a very bad idea, not only because of the risks I've outlined, but primarily because it does nothing to address the root cause of the current episode of global warming, which is the burning of fossil fuels, which in turn emit additional greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide and methane into the atmosphere. I hope that you have found this video informative. If you have any questions or comments, please make them in the comment section of the video and I will do my best to respond. Thanks for watching.